Hi, and welcome to this update video on Waveform 9.2. 9.2 is here, and with it are eight key new features, also lots of tweaks, bug fixes, and improvements. I'm going to show you the eight key features, starting with things related to plugin racks. Plugin racks can now use modifiers. The modifiers that previously existed in Waveform at the track level, you can now do within your rack setup. So if I open a rack, you can see that you can drag in things like an LFO. You do it by grabbing the icon at the top of the rack, drop it into the rack, then choose from your LFO, breakpoint, the step function, envelope follower, the random, or the MIDI tracker. So if I drag in this one, choose an LFO, then I can drag it over to my phaser and then maybe pick up adjusting the wet level. So I assign it to the wet level and then I'm ready to go. Feature number two is rack faceplates. Faceplates were introduced in version nine for individual plugins. Well, now you can use them in the rack. Go to the faceplate editor on the tab within the rack environment. You can unlock it and then you can use all the tools to construct your own knobs front panel graphics and build a faceplate like this. And then when used with macro parameters, you can combine multiple parameters onto a single knob, slider, or switch. And then you can control a complex rack environment with just a few controls. For instance, in this example, I can increase the reverb level and a few other parameters on this rack very simply. I'll just play back a little bit of this wind sound. And if you actually look into the individual plugins, like the Reverberate plugin, you can see it's adjusting the decay time on the reverb. This just makes it simple to get to the controls that you want very quickly. That brings us to feature number three, new rack presets. There's over 30 new rack presets to get you started with building complex rack environments for a variety of things. I just showed you the phased winds preset. I'll play a little bit of that back. Now if I bypass that, you'll see that this is a fairly boring sample. So these presets can take a kind of a boring sample and allow you to breathe some new life into it. Here's a vocal sample. I'll grab the new vocal long delay effects. Or the vocal subtle delay dub. Each of these racks is made up of a combination of effects from the built-in effects or the DAW Essentials effects. And in this case, there's an equalizer, compressor, and a delay studio that are all pre-configured to get you going right away. And feature number four, audio clip shrinking is optional. Well, this is something you might not have even thought about. When you go into an audio clip editing environment, when you click to select a clip, Notice that the waveform shrinks slightly. This shrinking vertically allows it to make up for the space that the header takes when a clip is selected. And it also gives you a nice indication that the clip is selected. Well, this is the default behavior for a long time, but you can now override this. If you go into the menu section, go to options, under the clip view options, where it says reduce waveform height on selected clips. If you turn this off, you'll stop that shrinking behavior. And for some users, you might just prefer that it just select the clip and not adjust the height of that waveform. So I'm gonna turn this off. And so then the new behavior, the selection, all it does is highlights the clip and the header, but it doesn't affect the height of the waveform. This is something that some users have been asking for and it is now in version 9.2.
And that brings us to feature number five, global UI scaling. Another long requested feature is the ability to take the entire user interface and scale it up or down to match really large monitors or smaller laptop monitors. Under the settings tab in the appearance page, you can now go to the display scaling and you can go up in 25% increments or down in 25% increments. And you do that by just clicking the little plus and you can see now if you want to really make this easy on the eyes with a bigger font, then you can do that by going up. You can go up even larger if you want to 150. And if you put that on a big screen, it looks gigantic. Let's just go back to this example. You can see that that brings up every element and makes it easier to see with bigger fonts. Likewise, if you've got a really big screen or you're using a large screen TV to project your user interface, you might want to actually scale down a little bit. Well, you can do that too by clicking the minus, and then you can scale down. I think the 75% is pretty good on certain large TV type screens. You get a lot on the screen using this. I'm gonna set that back to 100%. And while we're talking about scaling, the Master Mix plugin is now scalable. I'm going to insert Master Mix on the, in the Master section here by just dragging it in and it's in the built-in plugins master mix. We will look at the UI for this. In the past, the UI always was this size. So now you can just drag the corner of it and make master mix as large as you like. A new and requested feature it might seem simple, but if you're using master mix and you want to get this user interface up where you can really focus on what's going on, now you can do that in version 9.2. And that brings us to feature seven, sound fonts can now appear in the browser. The files tab shows a variety of waveforms and project files. Well, now you can also find your sound fonts in here for use with the multi-sampler. I've created a bookmark to my sound fonts library. You can get these either in sound sets you may already have, you can buy them, or you can also find a lot of variety of sound fonts free in online resources. So I'm going to go to the ultimate sound font pack. You can see the list of sound fonts in the SF2 format appears right here. The great thing is you can drag these sound fonts directly into multi-sampler. I'm going to create an instance of multi-sampler on a track here. I'm going to set up the input also with my MIDI controller. And now I can drop a sound font directly into multi-sampler. I can just choose any of these. We'll choose tubular bells, drag it into it. It gets mapped into multi-sampler. And now I can play my sound font. Both the SF2 and SFZ format sound fonts are available in the browser in this way. And now feature number eight has to do with crossfades, a very simple upgrade. If you want to apply a crossfade using the X fade button, then you can do that across multiple clips at the same time. So if I select multiple overlapping clips, you can see I've got overlaps already set up on this drum loop. And if I click apply crossfade, it asks me if I want to apply crossfade at the start of overlapping clips, at the end of overlapping clips, or both ends of this clip. I'm going to choose both ends so that it applies the crossfade on both pieces of the clip. And you can see that now it's done that across all three of the crossfades in this set of overlapping clips. So that's the 9.2 upgrade, eight key new features that I think you're really going to enjoy. They'll speed up your workflow or give you some new creative options when it comes to using racks and some great new presets to get you started. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.